Okay, this is revision session 7.2 um, about the methods of the civil rights movement, how they changed over time, um, how they differed from the deliberately peaceful, non-direct, uh, sorry, um, non-violent direct action tactics of Martin Luther King uh, to the more violent uh, activities of uh, Malcolm X or Ma more violent philosophy of Malcolm X and the Black Power uh, movement, the Black Panthers as well. Okay, so we're going to begin by looking at the Freedom Rides. We'll DEA the Freedom Rides, we'll describe what they are, explain, this, the, explain how they occurred, the events that happened, and then assess their uh, significance. Then we'll DEA the Freedom Marches. Uh, then we'll DEA Black Power protests at the Mexico Olympics. Uh, DEA Black Power more generally and then we'll get a quick look at Martin Luther King himself which is 7.3 so if we get through this pretty quickly we can get all of them done uh, in this session okay first of all the freedom rides things you need to know description just the the facts uh, the US Supreme Court had ruled that racial segregation on buses uh, moving from one state to another uh, was illegal so these interstate buses could not be segregated uh, but, as we've said before, some of the um, states were lazy, they didn't change, they didn't enforce the laws. These were national laws, but at a, at a state level they weren't always enforced. So, uh, students, a group of 13 students, or people, I don't know, I suppose they were all students, but a group of 13 people, seven black and six white people, uh, deliberately challenged this law. Uh, and they set up a, a, a journey that w traveled interstate and they deliberately sat next to each other, uh, so desegregated themselves. Uh, they went from Washington, D.C. through to the Deep South. Okay, They set off on the 4th of May, 1961. Uh, they faced various levels of intimidation. Uh, on the 20th of May, 1961, the Ku Klux Klan attacked the bus and some of the riders were seriously hurt. On the 21st of May, Martin Luther King spoke to them uh, and the church he was speaking in had to be protected by the National Guard. On the 24th of May, uh, a group of 27 Freedom Riders travelled from Montgomery to Jackson and were arrested uh, while going into a white-only waiting room. Okay, Nice figures for you, nice detail for you. 328 riders were arrested by the end of the summer. The analysis, the, the A here, the consequences of the Freedom Rides, they did lead to some desegregation of interstate buses. Uh, in, in September 1961, uh, a, a sort of uh, law was passed to desegregate, to stop segregation specifically on interstate buses, and this came into effect on the 1st of November 1961. Okay, so did achieve what it set out to do, despite the violence that was inflicted on the Freedom Riders themselves. Next is the Freedom Marchers. What you need to know here, that there were 900 demonstrations in more than 100 cities, the Freedom Marches. Don't just be lulled into thinking it was only one, the March on Washington. That was the most famous one. But uh, there, was, there were 900 demonstrations in more than 100 cities. 20,000 people were arrested in all. The marches were for jobs and freedom. If you want to be more specific about the uh, the, the aspects of civil rights that the uh, protests were about, the marches were for jobs and freedom. And they occurred in 1962 and 1963. And they all built up towards the most important march, which was on uh, in August 1963, the March on Washington, when Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. They, met at the, uh, they, they walked to the Washington Monument, and they heard Martin Luther King's speech there. Significant because uh, it was non-violent. Huge demonstration and Martin Luther King managed to, uh, and the other leaders, managed to maintain this uh, non-violent approach. Also significant because uh, they were so important, or seen as so important, it was all televised. And John, uh, John F. Kennedy, JFK, uh, met with the leaders of the Freedom Marches and congratulated them on their success. Okay, So the consequences of the march were that it got the President's attention. So we're into the analysis here. The importance of the Freedom Marches were that it got the President's attention. JFK agreed to meet the uh, the organisers. Um, 
there was no denying now that the, the the situation for black Americans was going to change with the backing and the support of the, the American president. However, there were setbacks, as we know. Uh, less than three weeks after the march, four young girls were killed when a bomb went off at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. This led to race riots, which were definitely not peaceful. Uh, and by the end of those riots, two more uh, young black men, or boys really, had been killed. Uh, Martin Luther King spoke at the funeral for the three of the girls, but no city officials attended. Now, terrible thing, a, an appalling thing to happen for these four girls and for the two lads that were killed in the riots afterwards. But what the certainly what the bomb uh, did for the black civil rights movement was it gained sympathy. It made the it, it just painted the white reactionary Ku Klux Klan members largely who fought back against black civil rights. It just made them look bad. It made them very clearly the aggressors uh, in, in this scenario. And when no city officials attended the funeral either, that looked bad for, for or looked good for the, the civil rights movement. Okay. So, bizarrely, the, the bomb that went off after the march on Washington actually helped the civil rights movement. Okay, so, there are the consequences. Now, uh, moving on to the Black Power protests at the Mexico Olympics. Uh, you will probably know the famous image of Tommy Smith and John Carlos with their fists in the air, with their black gloves on their hands. Uh, Peter Norman is a nice name to drop in there. He's the Australian who came in second place, who actually... Uh, I think he gave them the gloves, or he gave them a badge that they, that they wore. He, he, cer he certainly supported them. Um, he was, you know, he, he's the unsung hero of uh, of the of the piece there. Peter Norman, the Australian uh, white athlete who was, you know, happy to go along with what they were doing. But Black Power, really, what you need to know about Black Power, um, it was. Pride in being black, really. Black power. That's what black power means. It didn't mean it didn't mean being violent per se. It just meant the celebration of black American or Afro Caribbean culture. Okay, not hiding in the shadows, not being ashamed of who they were. Actually celebrating their um, the the culture. Oh, this is what Peter Norman did. He he wore an O P H R badge uh, in support of the the two black um, athletes Tommy Smith and John Carlos the consequences of the the black power protest were that when Tommy Smith and John Carlos went back to America uh, they were sacked from their jobs they weren't allowed to compete again uh, the idea the reason being the Olympics is supposed to be non-political of course it always is but the the their, uh, their, the Olympics was supposed to be a non-political event and they used the Olympics to further their politics. However, they, they did something very great that day. They publicised the, the movement for all to see and they got people thinking about it and talking about it. How they were heroes for their own country on an international stage but when they went back home they were seen as sec second-class citizens. Okay. Now, uh, moving on to Black Power Movement more generally, having looked at the protests at the um, Olympics, something called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was set up in April 1960. This was the SNCC uh, under Stokely Carmichael. It's a great name. Stokely Carmichael was the leader of the SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Although it sounds non-violent, non-violent is in its name, it actually became more militant, more violent uh, as it went along, okay? So this is, this is the kind of militant political side of black power, Stokely Carmichael and the SNCC. Um, Martin Luther King didn't agree with this. He didn't think that the, the, the uh, SNCC had the right methodology. But strangely, they helped one another out. If there's a violent, this is something that's worth bearing in mind. If you if you're asked about, if you get a question about the the, the, the different movements, the different um, methods of the movement, if there is a more violent wing of a movement and a peaceful wing of a movement, 
then the, the, the very existence of the violent wing of the movement helps the non-violent wing. Because a government does not want to deal with a violent organisation. So the government, in this case, did not want to deal with the SNCC. However, it was more willing to try and deal with Martin Luther King and the more peaceful um, civil rights protesters as a way of dividing and ruling, as a way of stopping, you know, cutting off support for the SNCC. But of course, let's not forget that the government might not have been as willing to deal with Martin Luther King had it not been for the existence of the more violent aspects of the movement. So uh, it's worth bearing in mind that in any movement, the militant and the peaceful branches actually both have their, their place, their, their part to play. Um, leading on from the, uh, the Black, Poor, Black Power Movement and the Student Nonviolent Coordinate, Coordinating Committee of Stokely Carmichael, we get to Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam, okay, another, uh, another more sort of militant example of Black Power, Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam. Okay, and uh, another one would be the Black Panther Party, which actually they looked like a, a kind of paramilitary organisation, walked around with guns and black berets, the Black Panther Party. Uh, Huey Newton and Bobby Searle were the leaders of the, uh, the Black Panther Party. Huey Newton and Bobby Searle. So just to recap the significance of these uh, more militant organisations is that they made the government more willing to deal with the peaceful uh, protest movements. And give you the just recap the detail again. You've got Malcolm X, Nation of Islam, Huey Newton and Bobby Searle, leaders of the Black Panther Party, and Stokely Carmichael, leader of the SNCC. Okay. An even more militant kind of view uh, espoused by some of these some of these guys in the Black Power movement was that Black America had to cut itself off from White America completely. Okay. Um, completely separate culture, completely separate lives to the extent that it was kind of um, racism in the other direction, okay? So to begin with, the Black Panthers were actually quite violent. They used to have gun battles with police, but uh, following the death of 24 Black Panthers, uh, its leaders gave up violence and uh, focused instead on community programs, okay? So the, eventually the, the militants of the Black Power, or the violence of the Black Power movement fizzled out and it became a more peaceful organisation. So that's Black Power. Right, I'm going to move on now to um, what is 7.3 as far as you guys are concerned. Uh, the importance of Martin Luther King uh, in the civil rights movement. You've already looked at Martin Luther King's role as an organiser, how he organised the Montgomery bus boycott following Rosa Parks' protest. Uh, how he uh, he was talked into it by a, a man called Edgar Nixon, N-I-X-O-N, Nixon, uh, and how he really was determined uh, to be uh, for it to be a peaceful uh, organisation, a peaceful mission. So the Montgomery Improvement Association that led the Montgomery bus boycott in 55, 1955, it was the Montgomery Improvement Association. It was determined to be peaceful, even in the face of attempts on his own life, Martin Luther King stuck to that non-violent approach and he became a national figure for civil rights, okay? He was like the totem, the figure, the, the figurehead of the civil rights movement after that, okay? After the Montgomery bus boycott, he went on to try and secure the right for black Americans to vote. That was the next big thing. Um, it was difficult for black Americans to vote because of taxes and literacy tests. That's what you need to be aware of. So this was a legitimate campaign, a legitimate as aspect of the movement to try and get black Americans to be able to vote. Martin Luther King supported uh, Stokely Carmichael's SNC in its attempts to, uh, to stage sit-ins at restaurants and swimming pools. Uh, where they would go and break segregation rules and actually sit in. This is before the SNCC became more militant. He also supported, Martin Luther King, this is, also supported the Albany movement, which was trying to end segregation in all public facilities. However, this failed. Uh, in 1963, Martin Luther King was uh, he ended up in prison uh, for uh, he was arrested during a protest march and he wrote his famous letter from Birmingham jail okay 
it was a very moving letter. Uh, I've, I've shown students uh, an extract from uh, the letter from Birmingham Jail. It's worth having a read of that. And when he was released from, pris from prison in April 1963, he planned the Children's Crusade, uh, which was you know, school-aged children marching uh, against... Uh, civil rights uh, violations and again it was peaceful and it was a, a way of engaging younger uh, black Americans and white Americans in the civil rights movement and again it succeeded in raising the profile of civil rights because the police commissioner a man called Bull Connor used violence to stop the marches this is violence against children and who ended up looking worse in the media of course the white policemen who were beating up uh, school aged protesters Okay, 900 cities were targeted for non-violent protest, but it was the Washington March that became uh, the most famous, as we've seen. Again, again, Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech. Following the Washington March, we've talked about the Washington March and how significant it was. Another big consequence of the March on Washington, as well as meeting the president and getting the support of JFK. Once JFK was uh, assassinated later in 1963... Lyndon B. Johnson or LBJ became president and he also supported civil rights uh, and it was in 1964 the year after the uh, March on Washington that the Civil Rights Act was passed so the Civil Rights Act passed in 1964 and you can say that was largely a consequence of the efforts of Martin Luther King uh, and following the the March on Washington as well okay the 1964 act supported by LBJ Lyndon B. Johnson, the president, it outlawed discrimination in hotels, motels, restaurants and theatres. It encouraged desegregation of public schools and made it illegal to give government money to any organisation that continued segregation. Okay, All government agencies were desegregated. However, the... Civil Rights Act did not please all black Americans. It did not give them the right to vote. Remember, that was one thing that Martin Luther King was very keen to do. It did not make uh, automatically black Americans uh, able to vote. So there was still a reason to continue the civil rights movement. Uh, in 1964, also, um, Martin Luther King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, largely for his peaceful protests in the face of violence okay straight after receiving the Nobel Peace Prize Martin Luther King went straight back to the movement and in 1965 he marched from Selma to Montgomery Alabama there's a film about this called Selma Okay, Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, but the marches were stopped. This was Bloody Sunday. This is the, the famous events of Bloody Sunday. The marches were stopped by the police, by state troopers actually. Tear gas was fired and the marches were beaten and whipped. This was known as Bloody Sunday and it was on TV. And again, who looked worst? Who came out looking worse? Again, the white, uh, violent police state troopers. A second march was planned, but King had to order it to be stopped because there was another planned attack by state troopers. President Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson, intervened again with the Voting Rights Act that was passed in order to speed up the process of getting all Americans, including blacks, able to register for voting. So, success again, the Voting Rights Act in 1965. So we've had the Civil Rights Act 1964, arguably didn't go far enough, and then the Voting Rights Act in 1965 as a result of the Selma marches. However, again, it's still not going to. It's still not going far enough. Things are not going far enough. They're not going fast enough. And it's here that we start to see the more violent, militant wing of the Black Civil Rights Movement um, taking over. Riots took place in Watts, W A T T S, Watts, very famous area of Los Angeles. Uh, the Watts race riots. They're known as six days of rioting. Thirty-four people killed. Martin Luther King did not leave Chicago. He carried on working in Chicago where he was campaigning. He did not go to Watts, perhaps. Maybe that was a mistake, some people have argued. Maybe Martin Luther King should have gone to Watts and tried to calm the situation there, but he didn't. 
He began uh, a campaign in Chicago instead. <coughs> King began to lose support. Campa campaigners were divided between the peaceful and non uh, peaceful and violent uh, methods. King was also beginning to lose support because he he was openly opposed to the Vietnam War. So some people who would otherwise support his civil rights, but who were in favour of the Vietnam War, began to uh, move away from supporting him. In nineteen sixty seven. King Martin Luther King tried to uh, he started a poor people's campaign. Okay, the poor people's campaign didn't have much success. By this time, President Johnson (LBJ) was starting to get quite frustrated uh, with Martin Luther King. He felt that he'd done quite a lot, and he felt that Martin Luther King was perhaps on some level ungrateful and should be happy with the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act and. Uh, to start this poor people's campaign was going a little bit too far. The poor people's campaign is quite interesting because it's an attempt to unite black and white. There's no mention of race there. It's poor people's, not black people's campaign, which is an interesting development in King's uh, approach. Nonetheless, uh, LBJ was not interested. Um, a lot of black American leaders thought it might lead to more rioting. Uh, however, before this poor people's campaign could really take off. Martin Luther King was assassinated uh, in April 1968. He, there's a really great speech, uh, the mountaintop speech it's called. Have a look for it. It's available on YouTube, but it gets the back of your, the hairs on the back of your neck standing up because he, 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 he knew that there were serious attempts being made on his life. He really didn't uh, expect to live much longer. But he still carried on campaigning. That's what makes him a real hero of the civil rights movement. He carried Martin Luther King carried on campaigning, even though he knew knew really he was going to be assassinated. So judgment on Martin Luther King's efforts very successful in the immediate term. Montgomery very successful there. Also very successful in uh, 1963 with the March on Washington was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964 and then the Voting Rights Act 1965. But then he started to lose support. Um, people didn't think that the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act went far enough. They started to move away from peaceful protest to more violent protest as they were seen in, in Watts and with the Black Power uh, and the Black Panthers and the SNCC of Stokesley Carmichael, people like that. Okay, uh, So Martin Luther King started to lose support. Uh, And before his poor people's campaign could really take off, he was assassinated. That said, let's look at how far things came in a very short space of time, to the extent that now uh, we have, or oh, as as the, the time of making this recording, we, there is a black president in the White House. The Civil Rights Act was Martin Luther King's sort of posthumous victory, if you like. Civil Rights Act passed in 1968. And the results of the 1968 Act were, you could no longer refuse to sell or rent a house to someone on the basis of race or colour. You could no longer advertise the sale or rental of a property and refer to race or colour. And you could neither threaten nor intimidate someone living in a rented or bought house. Okay. Following Martin Luther King's funeral, there were race riots all over America. Just to show the kind of widespread support that was still felt and the affection that was felt for Martin Luther King. Huge influence on the civil rights process uh, and the thing to remember particularly would be the, the, the three major acts, acts the governmental acts that were passed 1964 uh, Civil Rights Act 1965 Voting Rights Act and the 1968 Civil Rights Act Okay, and that's pretty much it for civil rights